Good day, I'm Stacey Ann Smith and this is your GIS News for Tuesday, September 16. Newly installed Commissioner of Police Dr. Carl Williams has vowed to work with citizens in the fight against crime while stamping out corruption in the police force. We will ensure that there is accountability at all levels in the JCF and our police officers will be held to the highest standards of integrity. Under my watch, the JCF will act decisively to remove any member who has chosen the path of corruption. Dr. Williams was installed as Jamaica's 28th Police Commissioner Monday, replacing Acting Commissioner of Police Glenmore Hines. The new police commissioner has also pledged to protect the human rights of citizens and increase the professionalism in the force. We must continue to use the force multipliers of technology and intelligence-led policing to make us more effective and efficient. But we must also be prepared to make changes in our way of thinking and our modus operandi that will result in the transformation of our organizational culture. Meanwhile, government has thrown its full support behind the new police commissioner. In endorsing Dr. Williams, National Security Minister Peter Bunting said government would be doing everything possible to ensure that the police force has the resources necessary to carry out its mandate. The National Security Ministry has already commissioned a strategic review and restructuring of the deployment of resources within the JCF. Which will help inform the commissioner on the optimization of available assets by reviewing the deployment of vehicles, personnel, and the location of police stations or police posts. Minister Bunting also reminded the new police commissioner that the security of citizens should be a top priority for the police force. So even our language must be less about crime fighting and more about service, public safety, public order, and partnership. And the branch of the JCF responsible for stamping out corruption has had marked success in this area. The major organized crime and anti-corruption agency, MOCA, is reporting that since January, 27 civilians and 31 police have been arrested for corruption. Another 600 persons have been arrested for breaches of the Lottery Scam Act. MOCA's Director General, Colonel Desmond Edwards, told JIS News that his agency is committed and focused on ridding the country of corruption and is encouraging Jamaicans to call 1-800-CORRUPT to report suspected or known nefarious activities. In the meantime, Colonel Edwards says MOCA will be ramping up its community outreach initiatives. So at every um, opportunity we intend to engage um, the communities and we're going to start as well um, with the, 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 the children. You know we, we, we already have discussed means and ways to get into communities to engage youngsters uh, in gender and develop an anti-corruption culture from uh, you know the, the youngest ages in our society. You know. In other news now, construction has started on a $170 million auditorium at the Woolmers Boys School in Kingston, thanks to a partnership involving private sector input. The new building will replace the previous structure, which was destroyed by fire over a decade ago. In his address, Minister of Education Reverend Ronald Thwaites lauded the partnership as $127 million of the project sum was secured through support from past students and friends of the school. This is the kind of partnership that will make us great as a nation. The education system, I say boldly and boldly, could never exist without the contribution of the alumni associations and the various partnerships that we forge in the system. The auditorium, which is to accommodate 2,300 people, will have a theatrical stage, a mezzanine floor and meeting rooms, and will accommodate indoor courts for basketball and other sport. The school is still seeking assistance to come up with the $43 million to finish the auditorium, scheduled for completion in April 2015. And finally, Health Minister Dr. Fenton Ferguson has endorsed a $250,000 donation to the Lupus Foundation of Jamaica, calling it an opportunity to bolster support and increase awareness of the autoimmune disease in the country. What is taking place this morning is not just a gift of $250,000 to the Lupus Foundation, but it really represents an opportunity to lift the profile of this disease and to continue the public education, which is so important for us as a country. The donation made by the Wisinko Group is also expected to help the Foundation's research efforts as lupus tends to mimic other diseases. 
We think we're pleased to do anything it can to help raise the public awareness of this often life-threatening illness and to help those with lupus learn how to manage their condition. Lupus causes the immune system to become overactive, producing antibodies which damage normal healthy cells. Statistics show that lupus affects approximately one in every 250 to 300 Jamaican women. The Wisinko group also used the ceremony to hand over 300 cases of drinking water to the Kingston Public, Victoria Jubilee and Spanish Town Hospitals. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Stacey Ann Smith. Thank you for watching.